Welcome back everybody to day two and day three of our San Diego Comic-Con coverage. It's been a busy time. This is our fourth fucking time recording this. Uh, we drank, we had fun, and uh, we have been having a lot of issues with our yeah. audio and recording for some reason. Because it just has to when we're supposed to be the busiest of our Pretty time. much. So, but uh, we're here to talk about Comic-Con, not bitch about our fucking technical problems. But hi, my name is Zach. I'm one of your hosts. And my name is Phil. I am your co-host. Yeah, and we're two just geek friends who go to comic-con and we do a bunch of fun things and uh it's been a good time this year man yeah it's been great i definitely think it's the strongest comic-con i agree in terms of like stuff to do in general yeah i agree and in general um how we're gonna do this is basically we've already done our day one Mm -hmm. which was the wednesday preview night that was very short episode it was like 16 minutes we're gonna run through what we did on Thursday, as well as then jump into Friday and then give some little small predictions and manifestations of what we want to see on our yep. final day, which will be the day that you guys are watching this, and then it'll go up the following day. So, with that said, let's jump into this, man. Um, Thursday, we kicked off the day with Transformers 1. Uh, this was a Hall H panel. Chris Hemsworth was there. Brian Tyree Henry were there. Um, Josh Cooley, the director, and Keegan Michael Key, and even um, one of the producers. And overall, I-, I think we talked about this a little bit. I wasn't too excited for this movie going in. I thought the first trailer was kind of ass. Um, yeah, that's how I felt too. Yeah, I was like, definitely not like interested at all for this. No, and I think it's a little disappointing because great director did a good job of Toy Story four, good cast, but just it looked too kitty. Yeah, it it yeah. wasn't it wasn't hitting the right keys. No, and I wanted this panel to change my mind, and I thought this panel was great. Um, in terms of hearing their passion for Transformers. In terms of hearing a ton of other things, uh, seeing things, uh, we got to see three different clips. Uh, one that was definitely from the start of the film, one that was kind of closer to the middle of the film, and then the one that was the third, which really kicked off the whole fruition of where is this story going. And it shows it get a little darker. Yeah. I mean, Megatron, his name's not Megatron yet, put a fucking gun to someone's head. It was in the trailer, so we so we can talk yeah. about that. But um. Yeah, man, I, I really like this panel. And I think one of my biggest things that I, I was kind of going into this is that I just needed to be proved why is this being made and why is Josh Cooley making this as a director. And from the start, uh, the number one thing in the feeling I got leaving this was, one, I have to see this movie. I'm so excited to see mm-hmm. this movie now. But two, it felt like Toy Story 1 for some reason for me with the friendship between them. And how did their friendship split? Where in reality, Toy Story was the opposite. It was two people coming together and becoming friends by the end. Mm -hmm. And there's a moment that reminded me of the falling with style part between Buzz and Woody in the first film. And I just got goosebumps from it. And Mm -hmm. I just imagined that like when I have my first kid, whether I do years from now or whatever, whenever they watch this movie, this is going to be probably their introduction to Transformers. Yeah. So uh, I'm glad that... um at least now, like with newer kids, I definitely think they're gonna like the show. And for like the parents, the movie. The movie yeah. Sorry, no, it's late. It's late. I yeah, it is late. But for the parents who go ahead and take their kids out and go see this movie, and are like, all right, you know, like hopefully they like it because I liked it growing up. I I hope. Um, I'm sure you guys are gonna be super like surprised and pleasantly like excited for it, and you're gonna see some good fan service from the stuff that you grew up and get some uh, explanation to what you've really been watching because Transformers always been a show about all gas and no brakes. Yeah. They just, Especially it's these just new fighting. movies with Michael I, Bay. Yeah. I know. This so, one has heart to it. Uh, yeah. Bumblebee had heart to it too, but it, it's really cool and it was awesome to hear. Chris Hemsworth sounds like he's very dedicated and mm-hmm. very pursuing of the voice. Brian Tyree Henry, same thing. Keegan Michael Key was a lot of fun. He was doing all the transforming noise. Boo boo doo doo boo. Boo doo 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 Um it was just an overall fun panel, man. And if I were to give it a rating, I'd give it an eight out of ten. Yeah, I'm gonna give it an eight too. It's it sold me on the film and that's exactly what it did. It didn't yeah. blow my mind yet. But I'm hoping that the film actually blows. Yeah, the my clips mind. the clips were actually pretty decent, and it shows like why it deserves a space to be, you know, actually a competitor in animation exactly. and for exactly kids to watch. So yeah, and then uh, something we actually forgot about to talk about was we actually did stay in Hall H for one more panel. We went to the SpongeBob panel. Oh my goodness, we forgot about SpongeBob. Yeah, and what's funnier than twenty four? 
25. And why is that? Because it's SpongeBob's 25th anniversary, and they went like all out for Comic Con this year in terms of like everything that like so many decorations. And this panel, we weren't gonna stay for it. Um, I don't yeah. even know if we were planning to stay for the whole thing, but it was very entertaining. Um, they had the whole voice cast show up. Um, it was kind of interesting. Like I never knew what Plankton looked like in real life. I know. Uh, he looks like. <laughs> and it was fun to find out that he actually auditioned for SpongeBob. Yeah. I couldn't imagine that. He was. Um, and they asked, remember they asked him, they're like, what voice did you do for that? He goes, I did Plankton's. <laughs> like, imagine Plankton's voice on, on SpongeBob. SpongeBob. Like, and can you imagine SpongeBob's voice for Plankton? It would be weird. It'd be crazy. Yeah. But it, it, it all came out together. And overall, this was just a nice celebration. I think the best thing out of the panel is that they played the pilot and they had yes. the voice actors do the pilot dialogue for yeah. the whole thing and that was really cool to hear and then, them doing um, it now yeah. they had everyone in the audience sing tiny tim which yeah. was funny that, that so. was great um that was all tom kenny's idea to the voice of spongebob and then since plankton and uh, sandy cheeks were not in the pilot they did their own little mm. thing of her learning karate which was kind of a fun sequence I, I haven't watched a lot of the modern spongebob but uh th this was a uh, you, you tired over there yeah. Or am I boring just you? Yawning. No, no, no. You're just boring me. Oh, thank you. <laughs> Fuck you. <laughs> Fuck you, man. <laughs> Piece of shit. Get back to reviewing. That's reviewing your job. My, reviewing my... Hey, you're a part of this now, too, man. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, the I SpongeBob... you guys. We're still friends. Yeah. The SpongeBob panel was really cool, and shit. they did announce that um, they are doing oh. a movie. They're doing another movie uh, for next year, and Mark Hamill will be fly playing the Flying Dutchman. He did the voice for us. It was pretty cool. They had a thing released in August on Netflix, the oh, Sandy Cheeks movie. So he, they actually showed us a lot. They, the Sandy Cheeks movie, but then they have a special coming out on Paramount about them going back to Camp Coral and how oh, disastrous yeah. it was. That actually really intrigued me. The Sandy Cheeks thing looks like ass. And that movie leaked on the fucking internet like a year and a half, two years ago at this point. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I'm not excited for it. I didn't like the animation. It, the, the, the clip they gave me didn't. Are you okay? Yeah. It's fine. I'm watching it. I'm watching it. You're All good. Right. Yeah. You're good. I can even lean over, talk a little bit, Phil. Hello. I can see it. We're all good. Yep. Yes, guys. We're testing this on the thing again. We are with PTSD from this shit. But um, yeah, dude. No, I really liked it. Uh, I'm excited. I can't wait to see what they do next. I know. Um, so if I were to give this panel, I'd actually give it a nine out of ten. I thought this was just a nostalgic blast. Of fun. Yeah, it was definitely nostalgic. I'll nine. give it a nine. Yeah. I know that's surprising. Uh, but after this, we did leave Hall H, and we decided to go do an activation, which was the FX one. FX always puts on a lot of fun. They're super nice to press. We just walked mm -hmm. up. They gave us the wristband, went straight in, and uh, most of it was pretty crowded, so we were only able to do two things in it, but the number one thing I wanted to do was the bear. Mm -hmm. I love the bear. I know you haven't watched the show yet, but the second we got in there, and uh, they basically recreated a smaller version of the restaurant. We got in. I'm like thinking, Phil, we're going to get some food. We're going to get some yummy ass food. They pulled out um, a really nice tact, like uh, rolled up. Like it looked, it like, looked a like a sandwich. sandwich. Yeah. And the, the the show, like the, the bear was originally a sandwich place. Oh, okay. So then I'm like, oh, fuck, it's going to be food. Yeah, we're going to get a I was sub. just going to take it with me. I wasn't even going to open it. And then I saw other people and I'm like, oh, it's not a sandwich. It's an apron with the bear thing, which I thought was a cool Mm -hmm. And Touch. they give us little toothpicks too. Yeah, I liked it. Do you know they actually ran out of aprons? They're just doing hats now. Oh, really? Yeah, so I feel well, a little bit special of what we got. Yeah, I know. Super special. And then after that, we went to American Horror Story and did this like elevator thing, which was like us going down in an elevator, but it was just the effect of it. Yeah. It wasn't scary, but it was cool. Yeah, I think like every level was like a different part or like. Scary imagery. Scary imagery of like the show the, that they've the had. The scariest part was like you get to the bot, it like drops and like you go to hell mm -hmm. and then the door opens and there's like someone there, but like she closes it too fast. That was cool. But yeah. if you like weren't standing in a right position, like you didn't see it, but I, I did. didn't even see it. She like opened the door and she's like, oh, I'm closing it. <laughs> yeah. So overall, I think this year I'm going to give FX a eight out of 10. I don't think it's one of their strongest years, but I do think the bear recreation was like absolutely like as a fan of the bear. That was like my favorite yeah. thing. They also had a place where you can make your own umbrella. We, we weren't going to wait two yeah. hours for that. So but then after that, we went into the Hulu activation, which that show was, was awesome. That was awesome. We didn't get to do it the year prior, but this was awesome. You basically get transported in through all the cartoon shows on Hulu and that basically Disney owns. 
and uh, it, you go through like a conveyor belt at first. Mm-hmm. And yeah. you're, the, it's basically the whole thing's a conveyor belt. Yeah, of shifting you through each uh, cartoon. So the first the overall room, design was like a factory, and then each little section of the factory was like different parts of their show. So the first one was just like the photo op. Yeah, that was um, cute. Yeah, it was super cute. It was like the slum, and they had a yeah, bunch of other the stuff. the next one was Family Guy, which Family you, Guy. You, you were more interactive on this all you take this Yeah, so this one was just like you take an item from the shelf, uh, from these shelves, and you put them on a pedestal, and the whole gag is that it takes you to a cutaway scene from whatever that, that episode. That you can't hear. I don't know yeah. if ours was just broken or what that we used, but it was cute. It was yeah. fun. Uh, the next thing we did, we got this dude. We got a, a Goobler. It looks Googly like a piece of gloob. shit. If you're looking at the video version of this, our stress levels. It was from um, solar the opposite? opposites. Solar yeah. opposites. That was cute. You stick your hand in. You stick it out. It t- pops that shit out. And uh, yeah, it, it was really cool. Uh, the next thing we sat online and did Hit Monkey to see who was like the samurai master or something like that. Yeah, and the winner, whoever got the sword pulled, actually got a sword. Yeah. I'm really we, sad. Yeah, I we wish, didn't get that. I wish one of us got a sword. It would have been cool to have it. It would have been set. right here. <laughs> yeah, but it would have been cool to like bring it back and like put on the desk and stuff. Like yeah. Or in the actual studio. But yeah, I mean, I liked it. It was it was cool. Uh, not one of my more favorite activations or in that little plaza. Mm-hmm. After that one, we had to go fix Roger from American Dad. Uh, we actually won that. Uh, yeah. We sat in line for what, like almost 15 minutes and no one had won. Yeah. I have no clue why everyone was It was losing. really easy. Yeah. Like, I wasn't even paying attention to what the other... I just knew they didn't win. And then the second was, we go in there, like, and the timer didn't stop. So I'm like, did we lose? Did we yeah, win? I was kind of like... like won. I was kind of sitting there because the, we finished and the timer was still like 20 seconds left yeah, or something. Yeah, like, we finished and we were just, shit uh, in like 10 seconds. And so we were just kind of sitting here and it made me like doubt. Uh, like, the last 10 seconds I wanted to swap something out because it made me feel like they were like, you're not done yet or something. Yeah, you know? it's like, stop the fucking timer. I think we won. But we won. We took a picture yeah. in front of a piece of yellow poop with crowns It's a golden turd. Yeah. I don't know how to feel about that one, Phil. So. Yeah. That was it was fun. It, it was, was all fun. right. I, I didn't really care. The the coolest part was they opened up the factory end and you get to see all the different shows, their newer stuff, uh, uh, the Bob's Great Burgers, North, the Simpsons. Um, there was like drama. Yeah, I saw like some Criminal Mind kind of episode. I didn't understand? What that yeah, was. I, I I think it's one of their newer shows or I whatever. Didn't care. Yeah, but the cool thing was is that they combined the it's like. I think it's called Lard Lard Donuts from The Simpsons. Yeah. And then they combined it with the factory that makes the slum from Futurama. And they gave us pretty much these really good fucking donuts. The be- some of the best donuts yeah. I've ever had in my so, life. So, like, a lot of the donuts usually just, like, super airy and all that. But this stuff was, like, dense. Like, you ate half super of it. Super dense. Yeah. You it's ate half. Of shit. <laughs> Thicky bitch. Yeah. You ate half of it and you were just full. It was like gross finishing, I'm but it was so lie. good. Dude, that thing made my stomach fucking hurt though. It was yeah. so good. It was so, so sh- yeah. It was so sugary. It was super sweet. Yeah. But it was. And then good. we went and danced with the Belchers, the, the mm-hmm. Bob's Burgers family. That was cute. You pick a song from their show and you dance to it. Um, thought that was cute. And then right after that, we got a, like a. A slum slurp. What did you call it? Yeah, it's like slum juice. It's the soda from That was actually Futurama. pretty good. That was yeah, actually was pretty good. good. I'm not going to lie. And yeah. then we got... Uh, do you want to bring it over here? Yeah. They we had a it. little concession stand. If you won the sword game, you got the sword too. But we got these nice little fanny, fanny pack. And then we Futurama got... Futurama pins. You could either choose this or Solar Opposites. We chose yeah. Futurama. Yeah. You, he has a friend that likes Futurama. Futurama. I have a sister who likes Futurama. That's, that's who's going to get those. Yeah, so. pretty cool stuff. Uh, overall, nine out of ten. Uh, best activation. Yeah, I overall, think overall best activation. Yeah, I give that a ten because it's like the best one. I, so. I love it. Sweet, Not ten from you and nine from me. But after that, we immediately ran over because we had to join the Deadpool and Wolverine panel and get into line. Yep. Um, I filmed a whole vlog of this, so it is on the actual Zach Pope Reviews channel. It's not on the Into the Geek first one. Definitely go check it out. Uh, you get our kind of like, are they going to show the screening? Are they not? Like our pre, what are we going to get from here? And then our actual adventure going into this, the whole thing, mm-hmm. them on stage uh our reaction to being in hall h where they did screen it um to just kind of give a frame of mind though it was a bit messy getting in there but once we actually did get settled i do think they need to if they ever do this again they need to figure out a better coordination because like yeah. two thousand people didn't get in i don't think that's fair i also there was like 
eight seats around us with like no people in them. Yeah, we were right behind the uh, reserved seating. Yeah, for ADA. So I was like, okay, like, no, yeah. like you guys couldn't bring in other people that like, okay, if all the ADA spots were already filled, like just like a movie theater, that's mm-hmm. when it becomes open for someone else to come in. So I, I, I feel bad for the 2,000 people that didn't get to go. Yeah, that's a bummer. They but, definitely could have handled yeah, that better. But Ryan Reynolds, Hugh Jackman, Sean Levy, Kevin Feige, uh, Emma Corrin all came out. And then Blind Owl pops on the screen. She goes, just show the fucking movie. And I'm like, yeah, show the fucking movie. And we're all right. Um, we watched the movie with 6,000 people all yeah, screaming. Was... Let's fucking go. Yeah, the entire crowd was just so loud and so hyped. And it was a really good time. They did hand us these nice little... Fellatios. The fellatio popcorn bucket. Yeah. And then another one that says, like, designed by Deadpool. But uh, the, the front of it is the best uh i'm sure if you're not watching the video version you you've seen it uh, all over the internet <laughs> yeah. so but um dude i was so excited for this and i was so excited to get your experience with it because i think this is like one of the best theatrical experiences we could have ever had yeah so i'm really happy we got to have it in hall h at san diego comic-con with six thousand people and again getting the chance to just scream of excitement not only that, the cast too sat down and watched the movie with us, yes, which and was then really cool. Went back out on stage and brought out the, the actual entire, cast. Yeah, we won't say who else came out for spoiler reasons, but to see all those people come out on stage, it was, was really, really cool. cool. And you'll, even then, we got another thing afterwards. Yeah, I was going to say you guys will get a lot more details from the spoiler review from Deadpool that we'll do but um eventually eventually once if it ever fucking works yeah but we have uh, filmed like three different things and every time something is wrong yeah something is fucking wrong so hopefully we'll get it a clock strikes twice whatever that saying is right yeah maybe, but, uh, maybe we'll film it tomorrow i don't know yeah but uh after the whole panel they did a whole drone show it's really cool we got some time lapses of it and it it was great. The biggest thing from it, though, was, it was that an end credit scene to yeah, it. Yeah, there was an end credit scene to it. Uh, after they showed Only off all Kevin the Deadpool Feige would do this. and Wolverine, they started having the drones being purple, and then as it slowly rises, that it's was such Galactus. A and then after Galactus showed up, then they got the drones and the had four. fireworks on yeah. the drones, and then a four appeared. And in a, the middle. yeah, it, a f- it was literally the Fantastic and then Four they symbol. Disappeared, and I thought it was over again, and it didn't. And then it said Saturday Hall H. Yeah, which we're manifesting right now. We will get into, which will be today because by the time we finish, it's going to be midnight, and it'll be today. Yeah, and then we have to get up at four a.m. Yeah, so that'll Fuck. be fun. <laughs> Either way, let's Either way. jump over to Thursday real fast. We spent basically the entire day in Hall H. Um, yeah. I would say, yeah, um, we did everything in Hall H. We walked the convention floor for 30 minutes. You bought a Fallout poster, but we're not really, we're not going to talk yeah. about that. Let's just jump into Hall H. Uh, for some of the things we're going to talk about, specifically one panel, we're not really fans of the thing, but we did have a friend with us, Matthew, who is a fan of it. So I, I'm going to give like a rating of what I think for his enjoyment it was. Yeah. But um, the panel started out, uh, we got in line, got there, uh, met up with our friend, according to Seth. Uh, Caleb, um, Matthew, and as we're sitting there, just ready to enjoy the Hall H. We, what did we start off with? <laughs> the boys. The boys. So the I boys. Keep forgetting that. Yeah. You, you kicked this off, man. Yeah. The boys started off with the um, taking all the parody songs that they've done throughout their show, even the A Train rap one. Yeah, and the, the A Train. And Carl Urban. it truly never exists. The translucent one from the first season. That was so. Funny. They got all of it, and they did a little Broadway performance sing along. And uh, of course, A Train comes out and sings his part too, and raps out his his verse, which was really cool. And then after that, they finally got the entire cast. Unfortunately, Carl Urban wasn't there, and. Um, they had Jeffrey Dean Morgan narrate narrate and be like the moderator. I'm not going to lie. I was actually waiting for Carl Urban to come out because of how the season ended. I was like, okay, I kind of understand. Maybe he'll pop out at the end yeah. on his own team now or some shit. But it didn't happen. But overall, it was just a fun panel. Every person mm-hmm. got asked at least like one or two questions. Some good fan questions too. But the yeah. big reveals were the things that I was more excited about where uh, I'll, I'll say the first one. We got a Gen V season two trailer. Mm-hmm. Um, Hamish Linklater is going to be in it from Midnight Mass. He looks awesome. Chance Crawford, the deep is going to be in it as well. Yeah. 
Uh, just more epicness. Gen V was such a big surprise. Really liked this. Uh, what was the next thing they announced? That's right. So they had Jensen Ackles come out, this and is, yeah, this was a big surprise because they just kind of confirmed that he's going to be more of a – He's going to be a series regular. Yeah. Like, he's not just going to show up here and there. Like, no, he is he main is, character for the final season. Yeah, he is a – I'm pretty sure he's going to be a big plot point for the season. I agree. So, which is going to be they're good. Go on a father-dad trip, remember? That's yeah. That's what they're saying on stage. And as Jensen Ackles is, like, reading the teleprompter and everything, it, I definitely felt like it was super genuine. He's like, oh, shit, I'm reading this for the first time, too. Yeah. And he's like, I'm getting my own spinoff show, and it just takes off all the lights. And then, I for, what's her name? Va- Oh, Aya Cash, who plays Aya Cash, comes out and they announce that they're going to be doing another spinoff show called of Vought, both of, them. of both of them called Vought Rising, taking place in 1950s, 1950s New York, New York, the and, origins of the company with yeah. them too, and it's a prequel. And as I was telling you, I wasn't that excited for when Gen V was announced. I was like, "This is a fucking stupid idea." Mm-hmm. Like, just continue with the boys. But I love this idea. And I don't know if it's just because I love both those characters. Uh, Soldier Boy's fucking awesome. Yeah, he stole season three. He and was so good. The only, you know, the only thing I'm curious about this show though is they are both pieces of shit characters. They that are. is a really hard sell because <laughs> they have to have someone that's opposite of them that's not. Now, is this before they were pieces of shit? Well, she's always been a piece of shit. She's a fucking Nazi. But yeah. That's where I am curious at overall because the boys is balanced out by huey starlight kimiko um well Stormfront was originally liberty oh yeah so that's what they're gonna call it but again she was still a piece of shit yeah she was a piece of shit but jensen ackles is like he had no clue that she was a nazi or anything at least yeah. from what i remember i i mean i could i don't know how they're gonna do it but um it's i'm sure it's gonna be cool it's gonna be interesting so we'll leave it at that i'm gonna give this panel uh eight out of ten yeah, I give it a nine. I absolutely loved it, and thank God they handled all the fan questions. Yeah, very well. Yeah, they handled it well. I think the boys' fan questions could have gone wrong very fast. But after that, we got Lord of the Rings. Um, And just a preference, you're not a Lord of the Rings fan. Yeah, I, I haven't grown up watching Lord of the Rings. That's okay. Soon I will watch it. I just I haven't gotten around to it. I haven't watched any type yeah. of Lord of the Rings so media. So I can speak on this one just a little bit. I don't understand everything Lord of the Rings. I do love the movies. The trilogy, not not The Hobbit. And the first season of the show, I thought was good. It was a good start. I was pretty impressed with it from the first few episodes. And then it, it kind of slowed down. And I was like, oh, okay. They needed to win me back to the point where I was like, I want to review this for people. Mm-hmm. And when I saw the trailers and the clips they showed, I sat there and I was like, I want to review this for people. This looks fucking cool again. Um, and I'm hoping that now that we have all the exposition and all of the details already dragged out in the first season... Now we can move forward. Yeah. One thing I want to reiterate from our previous attempts talking about this is that one thing that I got to give them real props for is how passionate the cast seems to be about Lord of the Rings. Same with the writers. Like, I don't know anything about Lord of the Rings, but the fact that they come out and they're talking about the Elvish language and they're out here singing it, speaking it. And the they're dwarfs too. yeah, the dwarfs was cool. And then they even brought out orc. Uh, I think his name is Grug. Yeah. Another thing to point out was one of them, like a fan question, really good fan questions, by the way, for this one. And they actually had people come up and ask. Someone asked about a cape and like why it was pat- dadder, like destroyed and stuff. And just the origins of it. And they had a whole backstory for it. Yeah. It, like, that's it was cool to me. It was literally an off the cuff, like question. And, and, and they had an answer right away. It wasn't like that. Oh, I think it's it. No, he, he knew li- an answer, yeah. and he's just the actor. The writers, no one else talked. He knew. I love that detail. Um, I'm actually going to give this one a 9 out of 10. This yeah. one really impressed me. Um, what about you as like someone who's not a Lord of the Rings fan? Yeah, it definitely um, piques my interest. They did a better job this time around instead of season one. So a 6 or an 8? Um, I give it an 8. Nice. Okay, okay. Uh, what was up next after this one? Lord of the Rings. Was it Doctor Who next? Doctor Who, okay, yes. Okay, so Doctor Who we had next. Now, this one, not going to say a lot on. Um, honestly, we were just exhausted at this point. Mm-hmm. We've never seen Doctor Who. Um, Matt, our good fan, uh, he was a big fan of this. Yeah. I'd give it a 10 out of He 10 was giddy. His, his giddiness. Yeah, he was giddy um, throughout the whole thing. It, I'm not going to lie. His giddiness kind of started rubbing off on me. I was like, 
maybe I do want to watch Doctor Who like mm-hmm. one day. Uh, but his giddiness was really good. Uh, I'm going to assume he would give this panel a 10 out of 10. Yeah. Uh, the actors looked like they were having fun. The the clips they showed were cool. And I'm sure for if like... If we had to give it, it'd probably be like a five or a six. But that's not because it was bad. We just don't know what the fuck is going on. Yeah. I'm sure all the Doctor Who fans are definitely going to be eating this media up because yeah. when they were showing off clips and everything and they, they were, were showing cheering. characters, when you would see certain characters pop up, they were like, ooh, ooh. like Even as the, if it was like a returning creator, character. The main writer person of this all was like super into it and like obviously like expressing his excitement. Mm-hmm. So... But something that no one else is going to give a fuck about except us is the Walking Dead panel. Uh, we had two Walking Dead panels, Dead City for season two, Daryl Dixon season two, and an announcement that Daryl Dixon is getting in season three and going to Spain. These were good panels. Yeah. Uh, I was going to say a shout out to the Walking Dead fans because they're, they're passionate. Yeah. Every single time you think the... I, I always think that there's going to be some type of fans out of other panels that are going to outshine them, but Walking Dead, they're hardcore fans. Every time, man. They're Every really time. lovely people. And like when we went in 2019, right? Or or no, sorry. Uh, 20, 2021. 2022. 2022? Yeah, 2022 and 2020. 2019 is the one that you went to alone. Yeah. That's all right. So in 2022... When we first went and they had the original cast out there, there were so many people just saying how much Walking Dead meant to yeah, them. Yeah, they weren't and even like saying questions or anything. And it was like, man, it's crazy because uh, Walking Dead to me personally is a, made a big impact on my life because mm-hmm. it was the biggest piece of media that I could bond with my dad before he passed. So, like, I I've it's definitely resonate bond with people, and yeah. I still and. I mean, no matter what you feel about it, I feel everyone at least at one point in time got into this show, no matter how many seasons it was. And it was one of the things that really surprised me. Just like you said, you watched it with your dad. I watched it with my dad. And then I switched over to some of my friends when my dad gave up on the show. And even now, like I, I watch, I finished the show. I liked it. I thought it was solid and I enjoyed it for what it was. Um, the spinoffs, I was actually kind of surprised. I, I mm-hmm. told you the Rick and Michonne one. It was just too short, and that was like a personal bias thing. I wish yeah. it was longer. Uh, Daryl Dixon's a really solid show. Dead City's a really solid show. Props Marcus to them back. for doing it for over 10 yeah, years now. Yeah, 10, 13 years, some of them. So, yeah, I mean, these panels were good. I'm going to give them an 8 out of 10. I thought they were fun. Yeah, I I give it a 9 because just oh, okay. longtime fans. It's just cool to be there with so many people who are passionate who are pa- about it. That's the one thing. When you're at Hall H, so, like, we're obviously going to go in – manifesting that we're going to get on Saturday to see Marvel and stuff. But obviously a lot of the panels beforehand, Star Trek, like it's going to be there. I'm not big on Star Trek, but everyone else is. Mm. That's cool to listen to. Superman yeah. and Lois. Not, I'm not caught up on that show, but it's going to be cool to hear the fans. Yeah. Um, the Penguin. I'm the fucking one of the biggest Batman fans with Robert Pattinson. I'm so excited for that show. I might be one of the only people fucking screaming in that theater. Fair enough. Everyone will be screaming during Marvel. But, yeah. And then up next was the director on director. Yeah, the director on director. Okay, so this was Roland Emmerich, Anton Fuqua, and Collider's Steve Weintraub talking about just movies that they made and stuff like this. And Um, Yeah, my biggest criticism is they could have definitely had better questions lined up for the director. I don't even know if it's the questions, though. I genuinely think... Did the directors even want to be there? Yeah. I, I don't think they wanted to be there, but they could have at least had some interesting questions. I don't know. Like, as a director, I feel like there would be a lot of perspective to bring to the table. I the thought AI it AI question, too. Yeah, the AI stuff. Was Wait, like, especially, ooh. like, nowadays with, like, the SAG strike and stuff like that. It There's just a lot of weird stuff. I don't give the moderator, uh, Steve Weintraub, any issues on this. I, I really think there should have just been one more director. And then at the same time, like, they should have shown something from both directors' next work. Mm-hmm. So we got to see uh, Roland Emmerich's and some Rome show that's out on Peacock now. Yeah. But Anton Fuqua, like, nothing? Like, it, it was cool to see them there. I love Anton Fuqua as a director. I can't say the same for Roland Emmerich. His films just, like, don't do it for me. And, and that's a personal bias. Um, everyone's going to feel different on that, but... I don't know. I, I didn't care for this panel. Uh, five. I didn't care either. I could have slept through it and been okay. Did, didn't you sleep through it? Uh, I tried. <laughs> what would you give it? It was definitely a three for me, dude. Okay. It was so bad. Fair enough. And last but not least, we ended on Alien Romulus, which if you're watching the video, you can clearly see the face hugger behind him, face hugger behind me. 
Um, they gave these out, uh, and I did not want to go to this panel. Uh, I was pretty adamant, or adamant. I was wanting What's to the leave. Word? Adamant? adamant, adamant. Yeah, I was very adamant. You wanted to leave, um, just because we were sitting there all day. But there was the possibility of what if they show the fucking movie? Yeah, and panel kicks off. First off, they have all this fog. All the lights are awesome. Panel kicks off and they show us like a what an eight minute clip, mm-hmm. and it was awesome. It was fucking awesome. And then uh, Tiffany Smith opens up. She was a great moderator, by the yeah. way. Great questions. Um, and did you notice that they sorted like through that line? Like that alien kid was at the back, and there was a kid dressed as a xenomorph, and he was in the back, and they let him answer yeah, the question. I, was, I thought that was really cool that they did that. Yeah, that was really nice of them because, oh, my goodness, dude. Every time we go to Hall H, it, I, I was expressing this to you yeah. too, is that I feel like some of the people who do the Q&A stuff, they just go to the Q and A line, and then they look at the panels. They're like, "Oh, it's this. All right, I'll ask this." And it's like, "Okay, yeah, I, I exactly." Guess. And sometimes they're good questions, yeah. And sometimes they're very cringy. But so I, I didn't want to go to this because not because I wasn't excited for this movie, because I didn't want to see anything from it. Mm-hmm. But again, I didn't want to miss out if they weren't going to show anything. So I'm happy we went because we got these xenomorphs, and I, they're really cool. They're really articulate. Articulate. It's actually a mask, but you don't have to put on the mask. Yeah, man. but it's it's really cool. I'm I'm gonna use it. Just I'm probably gonna like you see the holes in it. I think I'm gonna like put nails in the wall and just hang it. Oh, that's a good that. idea. So, you know what? That's nifty. So, but overall, it was creepy. Um, the movie looks fucking phenomenal. They showed us three different clips. One with the f- uh, the first thing with the face hugger showing up. The second one with a chase bur- uh, chest burster. And then the third, the third with the, the actual movie. alien. Yeah. And we got to take a look and, uh, and it's all cut up too. So we didn't actually get to see the actual edited versions. Like this is yeah. a, like the director said, I wanted to make sure nothing was spoiled for you guys. Uh, Betty Alvarez. Um, and also the cast did a really good job just talking about the movie and getting everyone excited. Um, I, I cannot wait for this movie now, man. What about you? Oh yeah. It's definitely a must see. I'm going to go see it with my brother. So I'm going to tell you right now, this might be, my most anticipated film for the rest of the year now. And oh, I yeah. say this as someone who is not a big alien fan. Yeah. I, I don't think there's anything else I could really think no. of right now for but the rest I, of the year. It was really cool to kind of like hear that like Fetty Alvarez was like saying, I thought my other films were shit and like mm-hmm. weird and maybe not the best. And like, and then even Kaylee Spaney, the main actress of this, like auditioned for a previous film of his and she was sad. And then it got creepy when they were in the middle of questions and all of a sudden all the lights shut off. Mm-hmm. And like earlier on, they're like telling us like to not have our feet in the rows and like to hold back. And I'm like, what the fuck's gonna crawl here? And this box rolls up with this person, and they're like, I can clearly see they're in there. And I'm like, fuck this thing. And you see on the stage, they're all running around. Yeah. And then someone like has a chest burster come out of them, and dies on stage. Yeah, I was gonna say um, they did a really cool job. They really uh, took passion about. Um, making practical effects a yeah, big thing in this were film very big on that so when they showed these guys off they showed off the props for the actual movie and had them running around on stage and they look free those fuckers go fast too it's yeah. crazy i wonder how many they had for that one scene where you see them all running mm-hmm. i wonder how many they I, i'm sure some of it was cgi but like, yeah and this movie looks awesome i cannot wait uh nine out of ten yeah, definitely a nine out of ten for me. So, and that ended the day. Uh, we went and got food from Bubs. Got to go to Bubs if you're in San Diego. Gas lamp. It's fucking incredible. Yeah, great food. Good food. It really will fill good. you Best up. Best food we've had. Uh, good drinks too. Mm-hmm. Um, thanks for my drink, by the way. Again, that was yeah. really good. Bubs, sponsor us, please. Yeah, please. But uh, that's the end of the Geek First Day Two and Day Three, man. Uh, manifesting tomorrow, Marvel. Uh, if you're watching this, manifest for us. We are planning. To do a live stream right after, we're going to go find a spot, sit down, live stream our reaction, mm-hmm. um, then come back and film another podcast episode. But, uh, Phil, I guess it's time for us to go. Yep, it's time to get some sleep. Yeah, so thank you guys so much again for watching. And, of course, until next time, keep being a geek.